Dear aspirants, welcome back to another IELTS YouTube channel. So let's continue the lecture series of the Unit Three, Part Two portion, which is going to be on desert ecosystem, desertification, recent reports, government initiatives, and the state forest report of two thousand and seventeen, which is the most important thing if you are writing any other examination because these questions from this area is frequently occurring. So before I start this session, the PGP guidance reminder is a personal guidance program for all the Hindi and English medium students by experienced mentors like Arora sir, who will guide you step by step by providing you the individual. individualistic based study plan timetable daily timetable wherever you are present even if you are working or a beginner or stuck up with any other level of preparation mode he will try to help you with all the daily updates with the tutorials prelims and mains notes answer writing techniques one to one doubt clearing sessions for any kind of help through this program do avail it by contacting below mentioned phone numbers as well as a mail id so let's quickly get into the today's session is about the desert ecosystem the desert ecosystem just to have an idea so that whenever i try to tell you in the subsequent slides like what is desert vegetation the what is what are the animals present in the desert ecosystem you will have a better idea so the desert ecosystem will have less than 25 cm per year evaporation is more than the rainfall that comes in the rich nutrients are very very less because the plants materials are totally dry only the desert habitations will grow here so there is not rich in nutrients and desert shrubs will be always having long roots because they will be trying to get water from uh, long distance ground water table such that they can survive in that kind of a location and this portion which i have highlighted has been asked in the previous year's questions like there have uh, there are no leaves and if they are also having some leaves they will be waxy and hairy because the transpiration loss has to be reduced they have this thick succulents or called the cactic plants where they can have thick stems to store water for long days together these are some of the desert animals like hawk fox lizard scorpion rodents and insects that form the biome of the faunal biome of the desert ecosystem then around the world there are some deserts one of the kind of a desert is the hot desert the other is the cold desert cold desert are mentioned in the green color which is atacama patagonia atacama deserts then namib desert then all the red portions are mentioned here are their hot deserts like australian stony simpson great sandy gibson uh, great victoria gobi taklamakan all the portions in the asian african sahara arabian thar in india then we have the sonoran mojave and chinuahan uh, desert in the north american portion so the next uh, slide is also the same thing but i try to explain it to you through the equatorial and temperate latitudes or tropical latitudes what kind of desert occur so uh, having an idea whenever the kind of a map question comes in you can easily answer these questions on desert ecosystems the next is the prickly pear cactus and floral camel and desert tortoise are some of the animals and plants in the desert ecosystem hot and dry deserts so there are two type of deserts right one is hot desert one is cold desert so hot and dry desert the warm there are warm throughout the year they are very hot in the summer very little rainfall like you know 1.5 cm per year is nothing it is just like some drizzles here and there all throughout the year inland sahara will always have le even lesser than the drizzles also imagine if there is no rainfall how what kind of a vegetation that kind of an ecosystem will have saharan kalaharan chinuhan no, so no, sonoran mojave all have these hot and dry deserts ability to store water for long hours because they have to be adapting to the hot conditions they have to open time bush prickly pears brittle brittle bush and all these uh, plants kind of animals like nocturnal nocturnal in the sense they only come out in the nights because in deserts the temperatures will go low that is why the uh, nature na the animals the nocturnal animals will come out in the night do all the searching for the material and activities and then get back in during the day times because the searching heat in the morning will not allow them to come out so some of the nocturnal animals have been mentioned here the semi desert is 21 to 38 degrees latitude uh, tem uh, sorry temperature having a uh, marginal areas of hot deserts in the interior portions where summer is long and dry winters will low concentrations of rainfall somewhat because it's semi arid right somewhat arid somewhat wet also so the average rainfall is somewhat better than the hot deserts with the uh, 2 to 4 cm annually semi arid plants are some of the uh, plants uh, names have been given here animals like Mount montana great basin and then sagebrush um, and then places uh, where it is found is north america new found in greenland russia europe and north in asia so these are the portions of the deserts that i have been mentioned hot 
and very very hot deserts semi arid deserts right so the coastal desert let's see the coastal deserts are like since the coast effect is there somewhat temperature modification will be there like 15 to 35 degrees where the average rainfall 8 to 13 centimeters salt bush black sage uh, rice grass leaf little leaf forts or all the plant and plants uh, that occur in this location animals are like uh, great howl all then golden eagle bald eagle all these uh, varieties are found in the coastal desert which are co closer to the sea location so atacama of chile if you see in atacama of chile are close to the coastal uh, that is why it is called the coastal deserts now there is another cold desert we always say that you know ladakh the area above it it's a cold desert because it is frozen so that is because this is near the tundra areas arctic part 2 to 25 degrees temperature it will fall below even 0 degrees when the winters fall in and the precipitation is about more or like 15 to 26 centimeters compared to the hot and dry deserts because there is a lot of humidity in the air right and the salt bush buckwheat bush and these are the some of the sorry uh, where did i just go yes here the uh, moist uh, and uh, moderately warm summers are uh, present in this cold desert moderately warm because there is a lot of humidity and there is uh, glaciers water that is available at this location that is why it has some amount of precipitation also increasingly here compared to the other deserts that is why it has got some good vegetation and animals like ground squirrel is badger kid fox all the animals then in the chart it says a coastal deserts in the location one is namib and uh, At uh, atacama the location and the kind of features they have has been mentioned then there are some cold desert like patagonia karakum uh, iranian gobi desert which kind of features they have been mentioned just have an idea like the namib and atacama are coastal des uh, deserts cold deserts are these and rest of the things are hot deserts as mentioned in the chart so hot deserts what is the difference between hot desert cold desert hot desert will have the lower elevation far from seas there will be interior location cold deserts whereas very near to the uh, cold currents higher elevations and higher latitudes major deserts of the world the same chart has been mentioning because to make you understand when you see these pictures no you need to understand that revision becomes very easy in your mind keep on seeing the pictures in the ecology portion or no matter even if you want to uh, go through your uh, world history portion or any of the history portions or art and culture for that matter when you see the pictures the rich pictures will show you the kind of uh, a realization effect when you can understand what actually the condition exists in the picture for a better understanding or better remembering power also now comes the desertification now till now we have seen all the desert biomes all over the world right so now desertification is nothing but in arid semi-arid dry areas degradation of this land only like it is uh, because of the human activities or some climate variations the desertification is degrading these places like devoid of vegetation animals are not occurring no water is there precipitation has more moreover decreased but let me tell you suppose the thar desert is increasing towards the madhya pradesh area that doesn't mean desertification desertification is degradation only in the present area that is degradation and it occurs where one third of the world's land area is covered with a dry land so over exploitation is a very bad thing poverty political instability deforestation overgrazing and bad irrigation practices are causing desertification in india itself if you see due to water erosion these orange portions are having a degradation due, the red portions are due to stony and barren rock ro rocket and stony waste and then uh, green portion if you see the acidic soils because of the forestry occurring there then the blue portion because of wind erosion there are there, there are different factors for a land to get degraded and make it uh, look like a desert finally that is why land degradation in india is a concern and what are the concerns and what indian government has done before that let's see the may, may man made causes what are the man made causes one is the overgrazing 31 percentage of grasslands are lost between 2005 and 15 deforestation because these forests act as carbon sink they sequester the carbon by capturing all the carbon dioxide in the earth's atmosphere into their system by preparing the food so deforestation will act as an antidote like it will negate the carbon sink principle then in farm practices also in slash and burn agriculture as well as heavy tilting and heavy tilling and the over irrigation also disturbs this composition of soil then urbanization making the concrete jungle climate change and over exploitation of the resources also happen to make 
quickly desertification in a prolonged sense. Natural disasters also occur that displace the fertile soil, water erosion, wind erosion also causes this land in trouble. The land is in trouble because 94.53 million hectares of Indian land is deg under degradation process, which is like 28% of the Indian land is under degradation. That is a very bad thing, which was in 2003 and 4, 3 and 5. Whereas the same percentage has increased to 29% in 2011 and 13. 26 million hectares to be rehabilitated by 2030 is what the commitment of the present government is. So with the bond challenge, they have accepted the bond challenge and they have committed for 26 million hectares to be, to be rehabilitated. In the sense like the degradation will be stopped and made sure that this desertification principle doesn't happen. So before accepting the bond challenge and what is bond challenge and all about, let's understand what India has been doing since independence to curb this phenomenon of land degradation. Land degradation or the desertification is nothing but through the command area program 1974, it tried to utilize the agriculture production by efficient water management such that Ministry of Water Resources are trying to implement such programs, command area development programs too in order to reduce the water usage such that the land is not degraded with lots of uh, excessive uh, nutrients or excessive leaching and all these process. Then the integrated watershed program in 1989 to 90 restored the ecological balance by harnessing what natural resources by rural employment, rural employment through Narega scheme, they will harness the lost underground resources. Then the Desert Development Program of 1995, it will have uh, because of the desert have been expanding or degradation in the areas of Rajasthan, Gujarat, Haryana and Jammu Kashmir and Himachal areas of Mini. So the Ministry of Rural and Development started this desert development program saying that we have to regenerate the resources. And thus the final step is that for uh, India became a signatory to the United Nations Convention to the combating the desertification in 1994. And then it ratified like it passed in the legislation for uh, uh, to mention its uh, positiveness or signatoriness to this uh, 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 signatory to be becoming to the UNCCD in 1996 by ratifying the law how it has done it let's see in this session but before that uh, United Nations Convention on Combating Desertification what is this in 1994 why, why India became why, how important is this convention let us see the convention is important because in 1994 it is the only legal binding agreement for environment and developing the sustainable land this is a very important thing and it has come up when Rio conference on uh, 1992 has occurred and then they have decided that okay not just the uh, terrestrial or aquatic ecosystems need in, uh, importance or the conservation measures even the deserts need the conservation measure that so that's why 2006 has been declared as the international year of De year deserts and desertification it specifies the areas of arid semi-arid and dry humid areas with 197 parties that will implement the convention and aim to achieve the sustainable development goals ministry of environment forest and climate change is the nodal ministry for this convention to make sure that Indian efforts are aligning with the UNCCD commitments. So the corrupt base portion to the uh, relevant to the C UNCCD is that bond challenge is something like a global effort has been done for, by the UNCCD members that 150 million hectares of the world's forest will be restored by 2020 and 350 million by 2013. And you, UNFCC being the party to it, Indian uh, India has joined voluntarily the bond challenge in 2015 Paris conference, where it said that I will not, I will regenerate my degraded forest cover by 13 million by 2020 and 18 8 million hectares by 2030. That is the current affairs portion. Where recently COP 14, which is the conference of parties. What is a conference of parties? Conference of parties is nothing but a convention like a supreme making body that will make governments and all the other organizations to abide by some rules and regulation that is a conference of party so in the conference of party of 14th meeting that has happened recently in the new delhi india has taken the pre presidency from the china and it said that we are committing to 26 million hectares of land to be regenerated or the degradation of land to be stopped from our end and which development goal will be related to this bond challenge or the desertification phenomena is goal 15 of 2030 which says that the planet from degradation and sustainable consumption and production we have to take some urgent action 
So the UN CCD in 2018-30 strategic framework it has given that which says the land degradation neutrality is to restore the 1.3 billion people livelihood from degradation of land and not impacting vulnerable populations through their strategic framework. That is what is an important portion. The next portion which is the final of this slide is Indian State Forest Report of 2017. So this diagram has been taken directly from the invitation card when the Forest Survey of India said that uh, release of Indian Forest Report by Harshwadhan, uh, like Harshwadhan ji, which who is the Environmental Forest Ministry. So, what is this report is all about? That it's a forest cover in India. It will say the forest cover assessment. It will tell you about the estimates at state level. Then, how water bodies are uh, at the verge of extinction or increasing in the state of uh, all the states. Bamboo resources. How are these uh, bamboo resources and timber production? So the, this is something especially done in this state forestry report of 2017. So who releases the report? It is a two, once in two years, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change re will release such reports. It is prepared by Forest Survey of India, who, which is the organization under the MOEFCC for assessing the monitoring the forest resources and engaging and services of training, research and extension is being provided by Forest Service of India. The forest cover, according to the report, is that we rank 10th in the world with 24.4 percentage of land on the forest cover, which is and which which uh, which is well below the target of 33 percent which we already discussed in the national forest policy which says that 33.1 percentage has to be there but now presently we have only 21.53 percentage an increase in one percent in total area of tree cover and forest cover which is 8021 square kilometers uh, compared to the 2015 assessment we have the maximum cover in this time is because of the very dense forest what is very dense forest and open forest we'll see in the subsequent slides and agroforestry and private forestry because of which we have seen many of the timber production and all the trees uh, conservation has happened because of the agroforestry mechanisms and 15 states uh, they have uh, more than 33 percent well above the range which india wants to attain through the forest policy then there are seven uh, states and uts that have 30, 75 percentage which are more than 75 percentage of forest cover which are Mizoram, Lakshadi, Pandaman, Arunachal, Nagaland, Meghalaya, Manipur which is much evident that Northeast and Andaman have this portion. No other state in India is in the category. Then the three leading states that with major for forest cover in terms of area is Madhya Pradesh, Arunachal and Chachiskar with highest forest cover in percentage terms is Lakshadi, Mizoram and Andaman, Nicobar. So the green cover the same thing which I have mentioned. Now the very dense category has increased and what is very dense and scrub and everything let's see now the very dense category is nothing but whenever the canopy density like the tree cover is more than 70 percentage moderately is 40 to 70 open forest is 10 to 40 percentage shrub is less than 10 percentage and non-forest cover is land is not included in any of the before mentioned categories then that will come under non-forest category so in the forest cover you, you can see the manipur sikkim and uttarakhand have shown some kind of increase in the forest covers then comes the global trend uh, let's see the global trend is nothing but eight in the list of top 10 nations of uh, net gain in the forest is uh, more in india in the eighth uh, rank in the terms of area percentage of area under forest cover is a 10th rank and globally is, in, is showing increasing trend but to attain the 33 percentage one third of the total land area on the forest cover is still lagging behind in terms of carbon stock like carbon stock in the sense uh, like uh, how much pollution has been reducing by carbon storage methods by the plants is 7083 million tons forest fires uh, are occurring in uh, mostly by open forests and then followed by modest, modest, uh, moderately dense forests. In 2012 to 16, highest proportion of forest fires have occurred in moderately, mo moderately, moderately dense forests and very dense forests compared to open forests. Then comes this uh, description. You need not read the below portions. You just need to understand that how the forest cover has increased over the years. But the increase is not that phenomenal compared. See, this is 7,1,000. This is something like 8,000. So the increase is in minimal pro proportion. Now comes the mangrove uh, understanding is how uh, mangrove has improved in the state forestry report. It says that it has increased only 181 square kilometers. 12 mangrove states are there in the India out of which only 7 have shown an increase. And then bamboo cover is about 1.73 million hectares in the bamboo areas. 
water bodies what happened to the water bodies is that they have shown a positive change that is a, for the first time in the report it has increased 2647 square kilometers water bodies so for top five states where the forest cover has has decreased is the what it is showing then uh, some of the areas where increase in forest cover has occurred here and decreased is here who stands where like gaining how much forest is gained by each of the state and how much forest is lost by each of the state is mentioned here so for some of the practice questions previously like in desert areas what kind of adaptation each uh, uh, modification leaf modification will have all of the three above which i've already mentioned in these previous slides itself in this session itself is the answer to this question then in the next session is uh, we'll be dealing with the aquatic and wetland systems which is very important because uh, questions have been asked from these portions so please stay tuned before that do like share subscribe to the channel and do comment on what kind of a videos you want me to make make for you so that you can enhance your preparation and before closing the session the pgp guidance program do check it out and contact for the further details because the details of the program uh, are mentioned in the contact given below and our experience mentor like aurora sir will only help you can help you attain your goals because you are at a situation you might be at a situation and understanding the lacunae or loopholes in your preparation not able to and comprehend it he is one person he will be helping you in a daily uh, one to one doubt clearing session with answer ready techniques material support so all in all pgp guidance program is a jewel innovation please do utilize the services until the next session jai hind